It's all about the learning, right? We hear that all the time and it's true, but it's also about the unlearning and homeschooling moms seem to have the biggest challenges in this regard. I don't know whether we're so conditioned for approval, thank you schools and mainstream socialization, or why this really is, but over and over, these same particular issues crop up for those of us who choose to step into the home education world. See if any of these ideas are lurking in your head, especially if you're new to all of this or moving from homeschooling to unschooling. Let's clear them up so you can get on to successfully homeschooling your kids. But first, I'm Sue Patterson, and this is the Unschooling Mom to Mom podcast. Each week, I come in to talk with you about unschooling and how it can work for your family. Most of society, including the homeschooling world, pushes us toward control and away from letting kids discover interests and using these as jumping off places, so to speak, for their learning. Kids learn. It's in their hardwiring. We may not always notice it, but it's happening. My own kids are grown now, and I'm creating resources, including PDF guides, courses, and even a membership where you can get some more hands-on help. These podcasts are only five or 10 minutes long, and I love that. And that may be all you need to jump into your week. But if you need more, reach out. You really don't have to do this alone. Okay, on to our 10 lessons that you're going to want to unlearn. And the first is the idea of I'm not smart enough. Don't you think it's odd when this irrational thought crosses your path? Most likely, you're a product of the school system yourself. And you wanted to put your child in the same place that didn't prepare you well enough? That's not logical. The good news is that unschooling parents learn right alongside their kids. You don't have to be the one to bring all information to your child. And that's so much healthier for the kids too. They learn to trust that they can figure things out and explore what's interesting to them and move in that direction. One thing really does lead to another and you don't have to be the one orchestrating it all. Next, we might think, who am I to do this? Do you hear that voice? Who do you think you are, young lady? Oh boy, do I hear that one loud and clear. This kind of talk seems to hone in on our self-doubt, magnifying it and attempting to embarrass us. It's odd how we can do that to ourselves, but after years of conditioning, it shouldn't be surprising. This is a spinoff of the idea that we need to always call in the experts. We can't possibly know what to do in any given situation. Does this one plague you? But did you call a specialist when your child learned to walk or eat solid foods? Did you have a tutor sitting with you and your baby when he would attempt to talk? Of course not. Maybe you consulted some baby development websites or your mom or your sister, but otherwise you left it to nature. You were completely okay with that. But learning, another one of those natural tendencies all humans have, you somehow didn't think you can do the same with that. Not true. You can. Your child is hardwired to learn. Your role is kind of like when they were learning all of those baby skills. You created an environment that was conducive for them developmentally and based upon their interests. You were flexible and continued to offer options as the baby began to figure it all out. The same exact process can happen with learning. It is happening with learning. Sometimes we have to get out of the way. Another thing to unlearn is that real learning has to look like school. School really creates a one-size-fits-all approach to learning. But educational research shows that children learn in so many different ways, visually, auditorily, kinesthetically, experientially. There's no way schools can accommodate all the different ways a classroom full of kids could possibly need. So instead of admitting that, they simply try to make the kids adapt to the system. They declare that their way is the way, and that's that, but it's not true. In fact, when we look back at the things we retain and or the things we really learned, more often than not, those experiences happened outside the classroom. Another thing to unlearn is that concern about what the neighbors and the relatives will think. This can be tough. Peer pressure has a strong grip on so many of us. 
again, all those years of having to fend for yourself for hours at school, you had to learn how to cope with peer pressure. So when we care too much about what a stranger at the park or the clerk at the grocery store has to say about why our little one isn't in school, we need to recognize that as truly inconsequential to our day, because it is. For relatives, sometimes we only see them at holidays and special gatherings. I have a lot of resources to help you get onto steadier ground with them. And as we're approaching the holidays, I'll put links in the show notes to help you build up your confidence. Sometimes they're used to us needing them in ways we just don't anymore. That can sometimes be what's going on, our new shifting role. I think the biggest thing to remember when we feel self-conscious is that we are our child's advocate. It's the most important role we can have. What other people think about us and our choices Well, that's none of our business and certainly not more important than advocating for our own child. Another thing to unlearn is this concept of our kids being so unmotivated. Kids can be unmotivated for a variety of reasons. And now that you're going to be with them more, you'll be able to figure out what that's all about. Usually it's because they haven't been allowed to make very many choices for themselves. Either a teacher was telling them what to do, or we as parents were prodding them along from one thing to another. Sure, they may have been unmotivated in the old setting, but that doesn't have to be the new norm. And what about worrying about gaps in their learning? We do have this fear that they will have gaps or that we need to stay on track. But the question is really on track to what? Those tracks that you're worried about really only apply in a school setting. On track to adulthood? On track to being competent? Research shows that rote memorization isn't that helpful and is often forgotten. Learning how to find the resources we need when a problem pops up, that's more critical. And we don't learn to do that in the school way. We learn it by actively engaging in our lives. Truth is, we all have gaps times we weren't paying attention or weren't interested and tuned it all out. And if it's something we ended up needing, we can look it up. Consulting Siri or Google or YouTube while you're feeling curious, that's the way of today. And because we're interested, we're much more likely to remember it. Another thing to unlearn is the concept of structure and how children need more structure. Well, this is a myth. Structure makes us feel better when life is feeling chaotic, but let's not kid ourselves. The children aren't the one who are needing the structure. Sure, some prefer to have a bit of a routine or need more lead time when shifting from one activity to another, but no child needs the structure of math every morning at 10 a.m. or history every afternoon at one. Sometimes we have to look at the fact that the adults cling to the idea of structure when they feel life is a bit chaotic. Instead, opt for figuring out what the rhythm is for your days. When is their peak time? When is yours? When could meals happen? They don't have to happen at any particular time. And these are good breaks to transition into something else. Let your structure evolve into what works for you and the kids, and then stay flexible to change it when you need to. This freedom is one of the big benefits of unschooling. Another idea is comparing and despairing. Comparisons and competition is also a remnant of years in school. It was used to motivate us and even to shame us into complying with the expectations for the class. So it needs to go. As parents, the comparing often looks like her kid is doing X, Y, Z or knows this and that. Mine doesn't. Oh, no, we're failing. We need to remember that comparing is never a good idea, whether it's comparing kids or comparing ourselves with other mothers. Kids all develop differently. They have interests and needs that vary from child to child. This is your opportunity to create a truly individualized learning situation. And comparing yourself to other moms, so often we look at a mom who seems really on top of things and we feel subpar. But we don't really know what her life is like. 
We don't know how much longer she's been at this either. It's a bad idea to compare your beginning on this path with someone else who started years before you. Also, you have no idea what challenges she has regarding her own family. People often only share the highlights on their social media. Another thing to unlearn (laughs) is the idea that everyone's house is clean except mine. (laughs) Let me put this one to rest right away. When people live in a house, it gets messy, period. Don't let having a clean house become a stumbling block to learning. Think about when you dove into some project. Did you spread your stuff out? Well, same for kids and their projects. Create environments where they can explore their curiosity and get creative. There will be plenty of time later on to have a clean house. Also, remember, it's not just a house. It's a workshop and an art studio and a library, a gym, a restaurant, a cooking school, a pet shop. The list goes on and on, right? Don't be jealous of other people with clean houses. Yours looks the way it does because kids are actively engaging in play. And that's what they're supposed to do. And lastly, to unlearn is the idea, if something doesn't work out, I must be a miserable failure at this. Again, the school conditioning, right? We had so much focus on how many things we got wrong instead of how many we got right. And then adding in all the humiliation that we experienced for years if we got bad grades or answered incorrectly in class, no wonder we panic a little at making mistakes. We need to shift this kind of thinking, though. It's not good for us, and it's not a good example to set for our kids. Missteps, mistakes, big or little, are really just data for the next time that question surfaces again. If we're filled with fear and anxiety, we can't really learn from it, and that's the true point of it all. Remember, we may stumble a little or want to throw in the towel. But even if you're taking two steps forward and one step back, you're still making progress. Don't give up. You're going in the right direction. And you do have unschooling resources available. Just reach out. So that's it for me this time. Enjoy your kids. Embrace unschooling. And we'll talk again next week.